When you think of flying animals, you think of birds. But they weren't the first animal to fly. They were actually 80 million years late to the party. So set aside your preconceived feathery knowledge and let's take to the skies to learn about the unique flyers all across the world. For the sake of this video, we are considering a flying animal to be any animal that does, in nature, use the air to propel itself further than it could otherwise jump or fall. Sorry kangaroos, that means your impressive jumps don't make this list, but this still leaves an impressive array of creatures. Starting off with... Flying Squirrels Found across the world, these little rodents utilize their parachute-like patagium to help them glide smoothly through the air. While they don't fly upwards, they are still called flying for a reason. Through gliding flight, they can travel more than 150 feet before falling to the ground, just like sugar gliders, but a little less than the flying lemurs of Southeast Asia, called Kalugos, who can cover 200 feet. Interestingly, it wasn't until 2017 that biologist John Martin accidentally discovered many flying squirrels glow pink under bright UV light. We aren't sure why, but it may be to confuse predators who can see the UV hitting their soft bellies in the twilight hours. This would make sense as they are flying to avoid predators like snakes. Unfortunately for them, our next animal is the flying snake, who may not hunt flying squirrels specifically, but likely use their gliding to hunt other prey and to move fast throughout the forest. These reptiles are the only vertebrates without limbs that are known to fly and it has its advantages. By undulating through the air, they maintain great control and can travel as far as 300 feet, twice as far as the flying squirrel. They're found in South Asia and Indonesia. But they aren't the only reptiles to fly. Introducing flying lizards, AKA flying dragons, who really do look like mini dragons. They use patagia to fly and are quite nimble and adept to tree life. They're also found in Southeast Asia and Southern India. I'm starting to see a pattern here. As they only grow to be about eight inches long, they usually only fly about 30 feet. So yes, unfortunately, they cannot achieve true flight like dragons. But stay put, because soon we'll go over the first animals to truly fly, long before birds, who just so happen to be reptiles. But if we're talking present day, there's actually only one mammal that can achieve true flight. Hmm, what could it be? It's bats. That's right. Unlike our other animals so far, bats can actually gain altitude and fly sometimes hundreds of miles. They've even been described as more efficient flyers than birds due to the fact that while bird wings are similar to an arm, the wings of bats are actually very large and stretched out webbed hands. Maybe that's part of the reason why we find them so spooky. They're also quite plentiful and can be found on every continent except Antarctica. But bats aren't the only true flyers on this list. Let's not forget about the little guys. Insects. Animals like bees, butterflies, and dragonflies who have tiny wings made of chitin, a material much like keratin which is what your fingernails are made out of. They're found all across the globe and are vital to our lives as they pollinate crops from much of the food we eat, like apples, broccoli, and potatoes, just to name a few. Shockingly, there are even some arachnids that use a form of flight. But before you get nightmarish visions of spiders with wings, take relief in the fact that they don't need wings. Their ingenuity allows them to travel by a process called ballooning. Once they're ready to travel to new lands, they find a nice spot, raise their abdomen, and release silk, and are whisked away. They've been found on weather balloons three miles high, and on the sails of ships 1,000 miles out to sea. That's almost twice the distance from Miami, Florida to Kingston, Jamaica, all in one go. They actually don't even need air currents to fly. They can detect electric fields with tiny sensory hairs on their legs and be lifted just by electrostatic forces. 
No wonder you can find them in places you'd never expect, like on islands in the middle of the ocean. Speaking of the ocean, surely there aren't any fish that can fly in the air, right? Actually, flying fish are found in all of the oceans, especially in tropical waters. They propel themselves out of the water and use their wing-like fins to glide up to 600 feet, which translates to about 45 seconds of being airborne. And while they come out of the water to avoid predators like swordfish, these little guys just can't catch a break, as when they fly, they become more susceptible to other predators like seabirds who snatch them out of the sky. But what's weirder than a flying fish? What about a flying frog? Yep, even frogs evolved the ability to travel through the air for up to 50 feet and are found in, you guessed it, the tropical jungles of Southeast Asia. What's next, Southeast Asia? Flying dogs? Well, as a matter of fact... Okay, just kidding. But there is one unbelievable animal that we guarantee you've never seen fly. It's the animal we've been waiting for. The very first animals to achieve powered flight. Pterosaurs, commonly labeled as pterodactyls. But pterodactyls are just one out of more than 200 species of pterosaur. These extinct animals started flying 80 million years before the first bird took the brave leap, living during the entirety of the Jurassic period. And even though dinosaurs are like, super cool, pterosaurs are reptiles, but they really are just as cool as they lived right alongside the dinos. No doubt life on Earth must have been taken aback as these Mesozoic monsters flew above them with ease, gobbling up fish and more. And while a few were as small as a bat, the most astounding feature of the pterosaurs was their size potential. The largest among them, the Quetzalcoatlus, was named after the Aztec serpent god as they had a wingspan of up to 40 feet wide. That's as long as a full-sized school bus. The only reason they could fly at such a size was due to their hollow bones, just like the birds of today. So, what's your favorite flying non-bird? Was it the flying fish? Or are you more partial to the humble bee? Let us know in the comments below. And remember to stay coziest.